Clearly one of the biggest challenges and biggest opportunities before U.S. foreign policy today is getting the relationship between the United States and China in the context of our rebalance to the Asia-Pacific right. And I can think of few individuals more able and qualified at this important moment in history than our friend and colleague, the Senator from Montana, to help provide advice and guidance to the President and to Congress about how to get that relationship right. As you are well aware, China is likely to become the world's largest economy, and all of us need to embrace that fact. Six of the world's 10 largest container ports are in China, as are numbers 11 and 12 on that list, which presents tremendous opportunities for American exporters. U.S. exports to China have increased by almost $40 billion in the past four years alone, from $67 billion to $106 billion, creating and sustaining millions of U.S. jobs in sectors across the board, from automobiles and power generation, machinery, aircraft, and other vital industrial sectors. Through the rest of the 21st century and beyond, much of the strategic, political, and economic future of the world is likely to be shaped by the decisions made in Washington and Beijing and the capitals of Asia over the next four to five years. The key challenge you will face as ambassador, should you be confirmed, and I am sure you will be confirmed, is how to recognize the strategic and economic realities unfolding with the rise of China. You'll play an integral role in reconceptualizing the problems we face and how to turn them into opportunities. In my view, the strategic decision by the Obama administration during its first term, described as a rebalance to Asia, was absolutely right. If confirmed, you'll be a central player in conveying a clear message to the entire region that America is an Asia-Pacific player and will be part of the region for the long haul that will continue to extend the efforts to rebalance our foreign policy to the Asia-Pacific, making sure the resources are there to work with allies and partners to shape the broader regional environment and context of China's rise. That disagreements need not lead to conflict. Neither should any of us labor under any false pretense that we are not going to safeguard and promote our national interests, and that we need to work with China and our other allies in the region to construct a new rules-based order for the Asia-Pacific community built on open and inclusive diplomatic, security, and economic mechanisms and institutions. And so uh, we look forward to hearing from you, Senator Baca, shortly. With that, let me uh, uh, introduce the distinguished ranking member, uh, Senator Corker.